Lots of greetings and warm welcome once again. Let's continue our journey, walk with Jesus from eternity to eternity. Before we enter into a devotion, shall we look unto the Lord and we seek his guidance and we pray for his mighty anointing to be upon us. Blessed Father, come to your awesome presence and we thank you once again for this wonderful day. Thank you, Lord, you have brought us to the weekend. The past week, your kindness and your mercies were upon us. As a way to Lord, end this over for the week once again by praising and glorifying your name. We pray that Lord, let your holy presence, let your divine presence, your mighty anointing and your grace be upon us, Lord. Take us, Master God, Father, through one more day and also, God, Father, help us to pass this weekend and bless us back, Lord, as we see one another back in the new week, oh God. We want to see your new blessings and your anointing and your new mercies to flow in us. This night, O oh God, Father, as we humble ourselves in your hands, we do, O oh God, Father, seek your guidance and your anointing. Father, be with us, Lord. Speak to us also. Touch, O oh God, Father, Lord, every soul, every body, O oh God, Father, and every spirit, Lord, that's in need tonight. We pray that, Master, unless your touch, unless your anointing, nothing shall happen, O oh God, and we pray for your divine blessings to be there upon us tonight. Move in us, Lord, and speak to each and every person. Let your name be glorified. Be exalted, Lord, and be humble ourselves. In Jesus' blessed name we pray. Amen, amen, amen. Shall we turn our attention towards Matthew chapter 12 and we'll read from verse 1 onwards. Matthew chapter 12. We'll read from verse onward, 1 onwards. At that time when Jesus went through the grain fields on the Sabbath and his disciples became hungry, and began to pick the heads of grain and eat. But when the Pharisees saw this, they said to him, Look, your disciples do what is not lawful to do on a Sabbath. But he said to them, Have you not read what David did when he became hungry and his companions? How he entered the house of God and they ate the consecrated bread, which was not lawful for him to eat, nor for those with him. But it is only for the priests alone. Or have you not read in the law that on the Sabbath, the priests in the temple break the Sabbath and are innocent? But I say to you that something greater than the temple is here. But if you had known what this means, I desire compassion and not a sacrifice, you would not have condemned the innocent. Let's take one more scripture from Mark chapter 2, verse 27, and shall continue our meditation. Jesus said to them, The Sabbath was made for man, and not man for the Sabbath. So the Son of Man is Lord, even on the Sabbath. Now we see two things greater than what the Pharisees were thinking, and two things they have more prominence in the sight of God than what the people who has made the law of Sabbath, apart from what is mentioned in the law, apart from what God has given about Sabbath through Moses, what is written in the scriptures, recorded in the scriptures, the Jewish people, as per their customs, and the Pharisees and the scribes, they made more harsh rules and strict laws and they are given extra, extra part of law. <clears throat> Sorry. Now, now this is what we see Jesus is condemning. Jesus did not condemn what was given by God, what is written in the book of law. In the book of law, Sabbath is to be maintained a holy and a rest day and a day that is, to, that is offered to God. Now Jesus, he never spoke anything against this Sabbath that was given by his father, our God, through his servant Moses. Now what, what is Jesus condemning here and what is Jesus speaking about that you people are putting extra burdens? There's something extra written articles that is related to Sabbath. Now, they haven't written anything anything against anything or 
in favor of anything or added to any other thing through the law but only to the sabbath only to the sabbath we see now the sabbath has become a great day a big day now this has become a custom and this is something like a curfew what we see today it's something like a curfew or a lockdown situation in the old testament days in a curfew you see even the sick person is not allowed to move out hungry person is not allowed to move out if the government has laid certain restrictions and you need to obey to them otherwise you will be put behind the bars or you will be punished according to what the law of that day and the land demands for now sabbath is almost similar to almost similar to curfew or lockdown curfew or lockdown this is self imposed this is self imposed and this is imposed by the jewish people and this is limited for the jewish people those who do not practice the law they are not under this under this uh, restriction of sabbath this is only for the people who walk according to the law who claim this law as god given word and this is applicable only for such people and if you claim not to become to become a practitioner of sabbath you need to become a jew first you need to change your religion you need to change your religion you could be from any other country or any other part of the world or you could belong to any other religion but if you want to adopt this law the law that was given by god through moses you need to become a jew you need to become a jew first so you have to change your religion now we see many people even when we come towards the uh, exploring the scriptures in book of acts we see so many people who had changed their religion and they became jews but later on when the disciples preached the gospel to them they became the disciples of jesus christ now christ a uh, following christ is not changing your religion following christ is not changing your custom you do, you, have, you don't have to declare that i have changed my religion now you have to declare that i was a sinner now i realize that i am a sinner and i confess my sins and i realize and i accept that with my full heart jesus is my lord and my savior who came down into this world who died on the cross for me who rose on the third day and he has the power to forgive my sins and he has the power and authority to give me life eternal so i bow before my lord and i confess my sins this is a relational confession between me and my god my god doesn't expect me to change my religion but jewish people they wanted to leave everything and follow the jewish religion so we see here any people who wanted to subject themselves to the law they need to become a person that belongs to the jewish community now there is an adoption method for this so jesus is speaking against the extra law that is given by the pharisees and the scribes but not anything by given by god through his servant moses so let's see this again so at that time jesus went to the grain fields on the sabbath and his disciples became hungry and began to pick up the heads of grain and eat now these people began to pick up some heads of grain and they were hungry now what does this mean you are a hungry person and the food is in front of you and there is a law or there is a religion there is a custom that is restricting you that no you are not supposed to eat this you have to wait till the sunset only then you are allowed to eat this now, a mother is keeping food in front of the kids on the table and the kids are crying they are hungry and a helpless mother says that no beta you have to wait till the evening and the kids are hungry now what kind of mom it is who cannot supply the food what kind of god he is when his children are hungry and he cannot provide so jesus cannot keep quiet here now he speaks he did not justify thank you master hallelujah glory to your name of god sorry for the interruption through the network so jesus never justified in a wrong manner now he cannot if at all he justifies the wrong he can never be called he can never claim himself saying that i am the way i am the truth now the second word truth becomes false 
Now he did not justify himself. Rather, he is teaching the people what is important. Now, we're going to see two prominent things and two most important things and two greater things that the Pharisees doesn't know. Now they began to pick the heads of grain and eat. But when the Pharisees saw this, they said to him, Look, your disciples do what is not lawful to do on the Sabbath. But he said to them, Have you not read what David did when he became hungry? Now David became hungry. Now you are hungry. You are hungry. Now there is no law. There is no law. God has no restriction. If you are hungry, God has no restriction to feed you. Now what is why David is coming here? Why David is coming here? Listen to this carefully. Because David entered into God's temple. He entered into the house of God and ate the consecrated bread. Consecrated bread is an offered bread which is not lawful for him or for any person to eat nor for those with him but only for praise. The bread that is consecrated and kept in the temple this is particularly for the priest to eat. Now anyone, anyone who wants to eat this bread in the temple, now they need to become, they need to uh, practice a life that is almost customary for a priest. Now if you have to go and claim this bread and eat this bread, enter into the, you, can, you can enter into the temple. You can very well enter into the temple, but you cannot, you're not supposed to eat the bread that is meant only for the praise. Now, in the place of worship, we see the priests are most highly and most uh, specially consecrated and they, they rank a special position, not just in the temple, but in the sight of the Lord too. Because, <clears throat> sorry, they always keep themselves holy. And now there is a bread that is kept inside the temple, which is meant only for the praise. Now, David is not a priest. So David is a warrior. Now David is running here and there, held the shelter from here and there. Now he, along with his army, his his warrior army, his companions, now he entered into the temple, but he was hungry. Now when he asked the priest, the priest said that there is bread, there is bread, but this we are only the priests are supposed to eat. But David justified himself by saying that no, we are also away from our homes and away from every kind of impurity. Can't we eat this? And the priest said, okay, go ahead. Now, priest said, go ahead. But I mean to say, there is no law in the book of God. There is no verse in the book of God, which makes him harsh and which turns him hard and then stops people from eating. Now, you are hungry. You can eat. You can eat. You are hungry. Now, this is what Jesus is saying that hunger is more important than any other thing to quench your hunger. To fulfill your need, you are supposed to practice what your common sense speaks, but do not add extra law for this. Or have you not read in the law that on the Sabbath, the priests in the temple also break the Sabbath and are innocent? But I say you to that, something greater than the temple is here. Now, what is this greater than the temple? Now, we know that temple is greater than anything else. Uh, even for the Old Testament people, temple is greater than anything else. You ask any person, any country, any religion, you go and touch the temple. Now you are next day, either you are behind the bars or you are killed. Because temple is greater, a temple temple ranks a holy place and a special rank. Now you cannot touch the temple. But Jesus is saying that something greater than temple is here. Now this is most important. You need to understand what is important, what is greater than the temple. Verse 7 it speaks. But if you had known that it means what it means, I desire compassion and not a sacrifice. I desire compassion and not a sacrifice. A sacrifice is again a special thing. This is offered by God's devotee in the temple. Now Bible says, now Jesus is speaking that, that offering you have brought, the sacrifice that you have brought here now, this is not greater. What is greater? Compassion is greater than a sacrifice. Now you would not condemn the innocent again. If at all you knew about this, you would never have condemned the innocent. Who are the innocent here? Who are the innocent? Not only the disciples of Jesus Christ, but all the people who are suffering in the land of Judea through this extra law. I say this is extra law or you can call it as a volume two of the law. 
This is written by Pharisees. This is written by the scribes. This is written by the priests. Now they have the privilege. They are the privileged people. Now they don't. They don't scan themselves under this. Now they scan only the people under this. Only these people. Now this is called volume two of the law, extra law, and Jesus condemned it. Jesus condemned it. Now second thing, what we see, which is greater. Second thing in Mark chapter in Mark chapter two verse twenty some we say Jesus said to them, this Sabbath was made for man. And not man for the Sabbath. The Sabbath that you are thinking is great is not great, but man is greater than the Sabbath. So the Son of Man is Lord even on Sabbath. So the Son of Man is Lord even on Sabbath. Now we need to put our mind, our senses, rather than putting the printed letters into practice. Now, Jewish people, they never use their compassion, especially regarding the Sabbath. If they were compassionate, if they have ever used compassion, ever used their mind, ever used their common sense, ever used their heart, ever used their kindness and their gentleness, ever became soft towards the people who broke the Sabbath, they would not have condemned Jesus and they would not have dragged him to the cross on the Golgotha. Now we see Jewish people are more harsh people. These Pharisees and the scribes, they are so hard, they are so harsh. They don't spare anyone. They did not spare anyone. Neither did they spare Jesus Christ. Now this is the first controversy we see. Now we are going to enter into beautiful controversies in the coming days. Now we are, we are seeing the scripture today. We are seeing this incident soon after Jesus finished or Jesus completed his first year of ministry. In the first year of ministry, we have seen nearly six miracles, and I'll be able to see another miracle tomorrow. So on the, on the next uh, week, the first day of the week. So Sabbath, man is greater than Sabbath. Man is greater than Sabbath, and compassion is greater than sacrifice. Compassion is greater than sacrifice and temple. Man is greater than Sabbath. You need to understand this. When you read the scriptures, Pray for the guidance of the Holy Spirit. Ask the Lord, Lord, what am I reading here? Am I soft? Am I understanding it clearly? God, give me your compassionate heart. Give me your merciful heart. Lord, grant me your mind so that I can understand the scriptures as you meant for it. The law that God gave to Moses, especially regarding Sabbath, is not harsh. It is very soft. It's very soft. It's easy. Now the yoke that the Pharisees and the scribes and the priests they laid upon the common people is more harsh way. That's why Jesus said, all you heavy laden and you people burdened, come to me, come to me, I'll give you rest. Take up a yoke, your yoke and take my yoke. My yoke is easy and light. My yoke is easy and light. What does it mean? When you accept Jesus, everything becomes easy in your life. Now all the scriptures, they will become, they'll become more brighter for you. You can understand. God will enlighten everything. God will enlighten everything in your life. And you will understand the scriptures. And the scriptures, scriptures never condemn us. Jesus was not into this, entered into this world to condemn. Neither Jesus happened to condemn anyone. He forgave every person. He forgave even on the cross. He forgives you and me. He forgives each and every one of us. So when you read, read the scriptures, the scriptures draws the heart of God. And the heart of God is so compassionate, so tender, so mild, so loving, so caring. You love, you, you love to be with him. You enjoy the real life of Christian. But to follow Christ, you need to confess. You don't need to change. You need to confess. So what do you need to change? You need to change your life. You need to change your lifestyle. You need to change your practices. You need to change what was wrong. Now adopt what is right. Shall we bow down and look unto the Lord? <clears throat> Gracious Father, once again, we bless your holy name and we come to your awesome presence. Thank you for this night. Thank you for the two greater things that you spoke to us. Help us, O oh God, Father, as we're going to end the winter weekend. Let your divine presence, your guidance, your commentary. Enable us, Lord, that we shall see back on Monday. Otherwise, Lord, help us there in your kingdom. All those people who are listening to this word, let every person be blessed in your glorious name. Amen, amen, amen.
Thank you for being here. We'll be back on Monday evening. Walk with Jesus from eternity to eternity. Stay tuned. God bless you. Have a blessed weekend. God bless you.